Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. My name is Doug and today we're going to be uh, trying something new uh, for me, which is using a tool post grinder on the Grizzly G4003G gunsmithing lathe. Uh, we're going to grind in some 5C tapers on some uh, Morris Taper 5 to 5C uh, collet adapters. So uh, hope you enjoy it. It's going to involve a little bit of math. I'll try to keep that short and we'll get right to it. So uh, thanks for joining me. All right, folks, uh, the first start of this uh, the project here is uh, I want to qualify the inside of the spindle bore to begin with to see exactly how much uh, this thing runs out. I've got my tenths uh, indicator lined up on the uh, inside of the Morris Taper 5 uh, spindle through hole. So let me go ahead and turn this on and let's see what we got. Looks like it's running about uh, a tenth out, which honestly isn't too bad. I'm pretty happy with that. Looks like maybe a tenth and a half. So uh, we should uh, we should be running pretty true. Let's go ahead and uh, put the Morris Taper 5 to 5C collet adapter in there, and uh, we'll see how bad uh, that runs out. All right, let's see how it goes. Well, that's interesting. The weight's jumping around like that. It almost, it's obviously at a round, but it looks like maybe at some point they might have uh, stopped the grinding wheel and let it dwell for a second. It's kind of jumping around a little funky. Certainly not good though. All right, well, let's get to setting up the taper on the compound uh, slide. And we'll walk through that. All right, everyone, let's get into a little bit of math here. Um, the basic concept of what I'm going to try to accomplish is I'm going to run my tailstock quill out. I'm going to use an indicator to touch off zero. I'm going to run the compound slide out on a 10 degree angle. I'm going to then, from that specified distance, run the cross slide in until that indicator reads zero again. Basically what you got here is a right triangle and we're going to go ahead and solve for some of those leg distances uh, right now. Uh, the 5C taper is a 20 degree included angle which means we need to set the compound slide at 10 degrees and basically like we looked at before here's our right angle this is obviously uh, the x-axis the y and we've got the hypotenuse here we know that this angle needs to be 10 degrees since that's the 5c taper and I've pulled my compound slide back and I can get more than two inches of travel on it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this leg length two inches now if we take a look at the machinery's handbook, which is where I always go for this stuff, I never took trigonometry, but it's all explained in there. The equation that we need to find this distance, which is the distance the cross slide is going to have to be moved in to verify that we've got our 10 degrees, is x equals 2 inches times the tangent of 10 degrees. Now the tangent of 10 degrees from the guide, the machinist handbook uh, reference tables is 0.17633 times 2 inches equals x. This number turns out to be 0.3526. All right, so this leg distance is 0.3526. All right, now, we're almost done, we're halfway there. What we need to know is how far we need to pull that cross slide back. I'm sorry, how far we need to pull the compound slide back in order to go in and get this number starting from right there. So if we just kind of use the Pythagorean theorem, here's one side, here's the other side, 
we square this, we square this, we add them together and take the square root of that and that number comes out to be 2 inches 31 thousandths. All right. As you can see with 10 degrees between 2 inches, and you go out 10 degrees, not a whole lot of uh, not a whole lot of difference in uh, in leg length there. <clears throat> so, again, we've got the quill for the tailstock. We're going to touch off here with our indicator at 0. I'm going to move the compound rest back 2 inches 31 thousandths and then with the cross slide I'm going to move in the 352 and a half thousandths and in theory that indicator should re-zero itself just like it did over here and that will prove that we've got that 10 degrees of uh, 10 degrees angle. Uh, one other thing, if this is uh, way more confusing than uh, you'd like, unfortunately, I'm not uh, that good of a trig teacher, but visit Joe Pizinski's channel uh, over at Advanced Automation uh, in Austin, Texas. He's got a great explanation on cutting uh, precision angles with the compound slide. He does a great job demonstrating it. I'm kind of highlighting some of what his work had already been accomplished. And he was the one who uh, gave me the idea to go ahead and try to, uh, to figure this out. So let's head back over to the lathe and uh, get it set up. All right, let me show you what I've got uh, set up here from the back side. It might be a little bit clearer. I've got an indicator here off of the compound slide, which is measuring where that tip is going to be. I've got an indicator here off of the cross slide. Uh, the reason why I have that is because I found a little bit of variation in the lead screw uh, and my indicating system on the front side, so maybe a digital readout might be in my future here. So I'll be measuring those cross slide movements off of that indicator, and we'll see exactly where this tip ends up on our 10 degrees. So we've got the cross slide. I'm sorry, the compound rest is set at zero, and the cross slide indicator is set at zero and this indicator is set at zero as well. What we're gonna do is move this indicator back along the hypotenuse of the triangle, which from the math we found out to be two inches and 31 thousandths. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 20 brings us to two inches and 10, 20, 30, one thousandths right there. All right, so now we've got this indicator tip off the quill. We're going to dial in what should be 352 uh, thousandths on this indicator here, and that should just touch off and get back to the zero point. So we'll go one, two, three hundred, three fifty. Indicator tip is just Starting to touch, and we go one, two. That's 352 thousandths movement on this, and on this indicator, we're right back to zero. So that means that this thing is uh, is close to being on 10 degrees, as uh, as I can possibly get it with the instrumentation that I have uh, available to me. So now we'll just go back and set up the uh, set up the tool post grinder.
All right, well, I finished the grinding, and uh, let's see what we got. I got the tense indicator hooked back up to it. Grinder's pulled back. Let me go ahead and give it a spin. I don't know if you can see that, but it's running out just about a tenth, which is not too bad. Not too bad. All right, let's uh, let's pop it out and we'll take a look. You can see the registration marks that we put on there. An aluminum rod, by the way. Now let's take and put it 180 degrees from the registration. And let's see what it ends up coming out to be. Just about uh, four tenths. All right, four tenths of a thousandth. Uh, I guess we could contribute that to the grinding of the MT5 taper since the spindle ran out only a tenth. I think that grind uh, that grind may not be concentric. Uh, the MT5 grind may not be concentric to the uh, center line of the of the whole adapter itself. Uh, that's where we're going to get uh, the five, four tenths. So uh, now that we've registered it, I'll see if I can't uh, keep those lines on there. So when I go to put this thing in and use it as part of the collet closer project I've got coming up. Um, We'll be uh, we'll be in the ballpark. All right. Well, I think we're going to call that complete. Uh, the fit and finish um, for the way that it started out, and you guys didn't see all of the grinding, but uh, I'd have to say that I'm pretty pleased with the way that it uh, it came out with the surface finish. I don't know if you guys can. It's going to be very difficult to see that. But it's uh, it's not too bad. It's a little uh, it's a little chattery, but for the most part, it's smooth. Uh, the angle's dead on, uh, so I'm happy about that. I think we're going to get good uh, good contact across the whole collet. Um, if I were going to do this again, and I have a second one, um, I think I might try a different wheel. Um, I found it difficult to grind the wheel concentric uh, on the on the shaft after putting it in there uh, so that was that was one problem uh, the second problem is is that uh, I haven't done a whole lot of grinding but it seems like uh, grinders really don't want to take off um, you know more than a thousandth at a time at least in this uh, in this scenario um, <clears throat> some of the problems I had uh, as I was feeding out with the cross slide and then running the stone in with the compound rest was that, I mean, we're only talking, you know, I'm estimating it 
a half a thousandths uh, depth of cut at best. Uh, there's backlash in the system. Uh, that caused a bit of chatter. Uh, what I ended up doing was put a uh, I put a tenths uh, indicator on the cross slide and uh, was able to uh, was able to kind of get a better idea as to where this whole thing sat as I was feeding it in and out. It seemed to cut better when I was drawing it out of the piece than pushing it in. So I would just uh, I would just come in and then back out. To the tense indicator, and then uh, use the cross, uh, the compound to uh, to draw the wheel out. That seemed to get the best results. I went very, very slowly uh, to try to get the best finish possible, and uh, I think for the most part, it uh, I think it worked. I mean, honestly, it's a lot better than what it uh, what it came to the, from the factory. Uh, you saw how it was running out uh, almost uh, you know a thousandth and a half, two thousandths uh, out of round, and the taper. Uh, was not even uh, not even close to uh, to 10 degrees. Uh, it's debatable as to whether 10 degrees was the best bet to go on some of the forums. Guys were saying, you know, if nothing else, you want it to be tighter on the outside of the taper than the inside, so that you're getting uh, uh, good contact. Obviously, if you touch off on the inside of the taper, that leaves the piece to wobble around um, in the uh, in the collet. So I really didn't find that to be uh, too much of an issue. I think I'm going to get good contact as long as the collets are ground to 10 degrees. I think we'll be all set. So uh, I'm fairly satisfied with the uh, with the grind. Um, I think with the setup that I've got, I think this is probably as good as I can expect. So uh, I hope you guys uh, found it useful and uh, don't mind uh, trying this uh, trying this at home. Um, it's a problem getting collet closers for the G4003, so this is going to be the next project, is uh, adapting Grizzly's collet closer to this lathe. Uh, I've got a couple of pieces to fabricate and a couple of manufactured pieces to kind of massage in, so uh, that'll be the next video. So, hope you guys found it enjoyable. Click uh, subscribe or like, and feel free to leave comments below. Thanks. Hey folks, one last thing before I go. I'd like to give a shout out again to Joe Pizinski uh, down in Austin, Texas. Uh, if you guys get a chance, uh, guys or girls, check his uh, YouTube channel out. Some really, really interesting stuff. Uh, if it weren't for him explaining how we can do, uh, you know, really intricate, uh, precise angles in the compound rest, I don't think that I would have had the confidence to go ahead and attempt to, uh, to regrind this collet adapter. Uh, so without his guidance, uh, you know, this probably wouldn't uh, have taken place. So uh, big shout out to him. Um, at any rate, I hope you guys uh, found this useful. I had a good time uh, getting this finished. This is going to lead to a bigger job uh, for the collet closer build uh, that we'll have up here uh, shortly on the channel. So uh, again, appreciate your help. Click like and subscribe if you found this useful. Leave a comment if you'd like. But uh, get out in the shop, be safe, and uh, have a good time. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.